Where'd he go? See him right there? I don't know if he was chasing that buzz bait by a three pounder. Where's my worm at? You know, so basically we just eased up here in this, uh, in this clear water. We've not really, the first place we were in it, you know, I didn't get any bites and I was just fishing around looking and, uh, and I see one, you know, I didn't know if he ran my buzz bait in a while ago or, you know, what the deal was. But uh, he keeps coming back to one patch of grass right there. And I've had him to bite. I'm fixing to have him to bite again. I mean, he's on his head now. I, I don't see a bed, but I'm thinking he must be, uh, you know, he must be guarding. Uh, he got it. Dang, come off. Dang it. <laughs> I got him to bite anyway. I don't know, I'm sure he won't bite again. <laughs> it's a pretty good one. That wacky worm is just hard to beat this time of the year. It's just a straight king shimmy stick hooked in the middle. Uh, we'll see how daddy comes. Oh, 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 he came right back. You know, I don't know. We'll just see. I, typically, I, I, I got a little bit of him, you know, so. Um, you know, a bass will do things when they're spawning or around the spawn or garden fry that they just normally would never, never do. You know, he came right back. He's circling in there. I don't know. He don't seem to be as, as gamey as he was at, right before I put that steel in his head. But you know what? As long as he hangs out in there, I'll have a chance. Well, you know, basically what happened was I just been throwing that buzz bait around and uh, I thought I got bit off of this Dr. Waters gin clears. We're up in the spawning area now. And uh, I just happened to look down and this bass was right there under my bait. And so I pulled down and picked that wacky worm up and got to looking and he kept coming back to one little clump of grass. I don't know if he had a bed there or he was garden fry. I had him on right off. And we got the GoPro like down where he's getting at every time. And he came off and it took me a few minutes and I finally got him to bite again. And uh, as you can tell, he made sure the next time that that shimmy stick didn't get away. You know, basically we got out here and uh, we found where they, you know, where the spawn has been happening at. And there's a handful of fish left out here. I, I'm not 100% sure yet that there's a lot of them but there are a few you know i've caught a couple seen a couple more and we saw uh, i saw one garden fry basically now we're just up shallower than we had been catching them on those duck blinds you know there's openings out here where these fish been spawning in that grass just clean places if you get on up there shallow enough it's just solid hydrilla and they seem to be like right in that area where it changes it seems like about where the pads start getting thicker at it starts breaking open a little bit and it's, you got some clean bottom Boy, that's a good one there. Mm -hmm. How about that? But again, I'm pretty sure that's a, that's a big male. I would really like to keep throwing that, uh, that wacky worm in those holes, but I can't see them. And so, you know, swimming something is really the next best thing. And what I'm doing now, I'm just blind casting out there and I'm swimming that worm through those open holes. And uh, I got bit pretty, you know, just picked that worm up and got bit pretty quick, so. And that's something you can, you know, cover water. Finally on that. Now I just, I didn't swim that worm by that patch of grass. I just pitched in there, but I'm gonna show you something about this time of the year. See where that hook is? See, he had that worm on the tail and it was wrapped, that worm was, so when he was swimming, that hook and all was hanging over. And that's how, that's the reason he was caught like that. The part that had the hook in it wouldn't even in his mouth. And that's just real common, you know, when these fish are in this, uh, in this mood.
Now, the deal is the situation we ran up on today, we we're fishing a huge spawning area. Yeah, there's still quite a few fish out there, but that's relative. It's such a big area, it's hard to land right on top of them. So the deal was to figure out a moving bait that would catch them. And my favorite is a cutter worm, Strike King cutter worm, which is basically a stick worm body with a, a paddle tail that swims on the back. Uh, the way I rigged it today, that's a 3 16 ounce Strike King tour grade tungsten weight. Now, one thing I did, this is 20 pound gamma fluorocarbon. I went to fluorocarbon because I wanted a little more stretch. I wanted to, to be a little more forgiving. Uh, just a four alt straight shank flipping hook. I always use a peg. And basically, you just want to rig the worm straight. And the reason for that is if you rig it and it's not straight, it will spin. You do not want it to do that. You want that sucker to track straight through the water and it tails, the tail's kicking. So once I get it rigged up, and again, like I said, perfectly straight and then I just pull the weight down on top of it and that's it it's a pretty simple rig you know the big deal is this is a perfect example of we've got a large area of the same type of water and the best way to break it apart is put that trolling motor down and just pick up something and start swimming it and cover water so join us here next time on Sportsman TV